democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. We turn now to look at the pre at President Trump's call to ban transgender people from serving in the U.S. military. The Wall Street Journal is reporting the White House has drafted a memo instructing the Pentagon to refuse to admit transgender people to the military and to stop paying for the medical treatments for transgender people who are currently serving in the military. The memo gives the Pentagon six months to implement the ban, which was first announced on Twitter by President Trump in late July, sparking widespread outrage rage and, apparently, surprise at the Pentagon. Five transgender military members have already sued Trump over the ban. Thousands of transgender people are currently serving in the U.S. military. For more, we're joined by Chase Strangio, who is staff attorney at the ACLU. Chase, welcome back to Democracy Now! It's Thanks, great Amy. to have you with us. Now, The Wall Street Journal is just reporting the existence of this memo. Yesterday, Sarah Huckabee Sanders said an announcement will be made. Um, what about what has been outlined so far? Well, again, I mean, so far, there's still no policy that we know of. Nothing has been transmitted to the Pentagon. But what we're hearing in terms of the nature of the policy that's being solidified is that it represents the same animus that we saw in the tweets. It is looking to ban people from enlisting, to restrict people's access to health care, and essentially restrict promotions and give the Department of Defense discretion to uh, kick people out at will. So this is uh, just the transparent discrimination that we've seen from the administration towards transgender individuals and so many others. Um, Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois, a decorated military veteran who was severely injured in Iraq, is urging Congress to block Trump's announced ban. She wrote in a statement, "'When I was bleeding to death in my Black Hawk helicopter after I was shot down, I didn't care if the American troops risking their lives to help save me were gay, straight, transgender, black, white or brown. All that mattered was they didn't leave me behind. If you are willing to risk your life for our country and you can do the job, you should be able to serve no matter your gender identity or sexual orientation, anything else is not just discriminatory, it's disruptive to our military and it's counterproductive to our national security. If the president enacts this ban, which would harm our military readiness, the Democratic and Republican members of Congress who oppose this discrimination must enact legislation that prevents it from taking effect. That's what Senator Tammy Duckworth um, uh, said. So, Chase Strangio, specifically talk about the issue of paying for um, medical care of transgender people in the military. Well, first, I think it's important to remember that the House defeated uh, an amendment to the NDA precisely on this issue just before the tweets. So the tweets represented the president's frustration and uh, actually probably the vice president's frustration that they were not able to get such a ban uh, through Congress. Um, and now we see uh, his uh, sort of impulsive uh, undermining of both the data, the science and everything else we know about uh, transgender individuals serving um, and his proposal now to, to restrict access to health care. The reality is that the military has billion dollars in their budget for health care. This is a fraction of that. And what it reflects is a misunderstanding and discrimination of transgender individuals. But the, the costs are minimal. The care is necessary. There's a scientific, a medical and a military consensus that this should be provided. And yet— And what is that care? The care, I mean, the care really ranges, and this is just like any other medical care. It, it involves a patient and a doctor making a determination about mental health care, hormonal treatment and surgeries, many of which are already provided for other conditions that don't impact deployability any more than other conditions, um, and that we see these continued restrictions, both in the context of now the military and efforts to restrict the care uh, under the Affordable Care Act and elsewhere under this administration, that reflects bias, not medicine, that reflects uh, uh, stigma, not uh, not legal standards, and we are absolutely going to continue to challenge these uh, these these issues in court. It would ban transgender people from signing up for being in the military. The proposed ban that we're hearing from uh, would ban enlistment, which could also implicate contract renewals of currently serving members, as well as restricting access to health care, as well as promotion. So it's essentially an effort to drive people out who are currently serving, restrict their benefits, and also uh, ban current uh, people who are interested in enlisting from doing so. How are people organizing against this? Again, this memo has not been announced. There, there's already one lawsuit pending. Uh, there are going to be many more lawsuits once this, this becomes official policy. Um, and we're going to see people across the country resist the misinformation that this administration is circulating about transgender individuals and our health care, which is both medically necessary and life-saving. Uh, the memo says that, as for current trans troops, their leaders can expel them if they deem them not to be deployable. What does that mean? 
Uh, it's not clear what that means. Uh, it sounds incredibly arbitrary, and there are already military regulations that bar uh, separation based on a lack of universal deployability. So this is completely inconsistent with military policy. Jay Stranger, thanks for joining us of the ACLU. And that does it for today's broadcast. A very happy birthday to Vesta Gadars. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Dina Gesder, Nermeen Sheikh, Carla Wills, Laura Gattas, Dina Sam Alkoff. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.